Even if you marry the very best person on earth, we all have issues. And, you know, sometimes you're, you're married and you're dealing with issues and you kind of feel stuck a little bit, maybe frustrated that your spouse isn't doing better. Jesus can identify with wanting a better spouse. He wants a better spouse. And who is his spouse? We are. We're the bride of Christ. And so we're, we're not the sharpest knife in the drawer, are we? He, he could do better. Okay. But you know something? He doesn't want better. He wants us. And he wants us to improve. And he knows how to get us to improve. And if we will follow Jesus' example, we can actually encourage our spouse to do better and to be the spouse we want them to be without damaging them and without damaging the relationship. Marriage, in an ideal situation, marriage should reflect our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so when it says, husbands, uh, love your wives as Christ loved the church, it says, uh, to wives, submit your own husbands as to the Lord. The verse before that says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So when it tells a woman to submit to her husband, husbands submit to their wives also. A, a man is the head of the wife. That's what the Bible says here, but it's a sacrificial servant head. It's not a ruling head or a dominant head. And so it's the way that Jesus relates to the church. But everything we do in marriage is as to the Lord, as the, the Lord does to the church. So that's ideal, but we all know that we don't live in a perfect world. When you want your spouse to change, you're, you're in a less than ideal situation, which we all are. How do you build a better spouse? What do you do to uh, get your spouse to change? We're gonna look at how Jesus does it. The way that Jesus does it is the only way that works and the only way that doesn't create resentment and damage. Well, how does Jesus build a better spouse? The first thing is he doesn't throw her away and start over again. He's committed to us. The second thing is, it is the only way that it, it that brings true results. This is Hebrews 13, four. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Don't be covetous of other people's spouses. So when the Bible says, it says, don't be covetous, Here's what Deuteronomy 5 says about coveting. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, his male servant, his female servant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. See, the first thing the Bible tells us not to covet is our neighbor's spouse. Listen, listen. what happens is we get married, we get discouraged and frustrated with our spouse and we start shopping. When you see a person from a distance, they, they look good. And what the devil does is he advertises and says, well, if you're married to this person over here, you wouldn't have any problems. And so God's word says, don't covet. Don't sit around thinking about other, it's just gonna torment you and fill your head with a lot of ideas that just simply aren't true. Some of you have turned your heart away. To work, to children, to somebody else, to sports. Would you turn your heart back? You did all the right things at the beginning, like all of us do. Maybe you picked up some bad habits along the way. Some of you need to turn your heart back. And some of you need to get back in the game. You're passive, you're on your heels. And you're not doing for your spouse what you did in the beginning because they hurt you and you're disappointed with them. You're not meeting their needs as energetically. You're not speaking the same things you spoke over them in the beginning, but they're the same person. Jesus knows how to build a better spouse. Jesus knows how to improve us. And everyone in this room loves Jesus Christ. That's why. There's no one like Jesus. His love is the most unique love on the planet. And that's why we love him so much.